Hello and welcome to 8th lecture of course on data enabled tribological engineering from experiments to predictive model. Topic of this lecture is mixed lubrication and we know mixed lubrication is very very common in all tribological applications. But before starting mixed lubrication what we really need we need to go through the whatever the knowledge we have gained from prior lectures. So, what we have already understood we say that wear rate and friction coefficient they are not material properties because we have seen a number of books they define the coefficient of friction and wear rate as a material properties, but we have learned that is not a material properties. Those are not material properties and no friction and wear what we can say they are the features of the system rather than a specific material. So, that means we need to consider system not a material as such material may play a role, but other parameters are also to be considered. What we are also learning from uh, previous lecture is something like a this tribological feature like a friction and wear rate they are function of time that means, these values will change it is not that define the coefficient of friction will be remaining 0.3 wear rate will be 10 to minus 3 something it will be for complete time. No it is continuously going to change. So, we need to predict those things and then uh, we, we can think about a kind of bottom curve where we say that initially the value of the friction and wear process will be little on hard side and that is why we use a word running in wear or running in friction also. What happens uh, during that time uh, the tribal surfaces adopt to each other that means, whatever the peak values or maybe peak asperities they may broken and then maybe reshuffle in a manner so that they go into the valleys or maybe discard it from interface. The question of friction also comes down where it comes down, but again that will not be constant it will be changing and it is basically statistical parameter. So, we need to think from that angle. In lecture 3 we learn that friction has a two components mainly of course, it may have many many more, but mainly two one is addition. And then uh, addition of we have to learn the junction growth for the junction growth we say we need to really share the uh, addition junction or we say that junction model and uh, that is where the lubrication is really required if you are able to reduce the shear stress of the interface that is uh, what uh, good tribological performance can be achieved through that. However, we also learn that there is a flowing uh, maybe harder respiratories will flow the softer surface also. So, that is also going to contribute major role in this case. In short, we can say friction force is the summation of friction force necessary to shear interface junction and for uh, friction force uh, to deform the surface irregularities. Deformation it can be broken or maybe plastic deformation, maybe elastic deformation, we need to consider altogether. So, this is what we have already learned. Another one uh, we have learned that uh, more or less, more or less initially what people earlier uh, done uh, more like friction model were estimated using addition models, but we know that as uh, uh, the surface is rough even in a micro and nano scale. So, plowing will be major uh, component compared to the addition component. Addition can be uh, significant component, but quite possible there will be much lesser examples compared to the flowing in the situation. And we also learn that initially friction reduces because of the uh, asperities which have a smaller cone angle will become a bigger maybe the bottom they get rounded off. So, that is why written the greater friction is triggered by sharp asperities or so, sharp asperities will be there where the cone angle is a smaller we are assuming that um, with the running in time this cone angle will be changed maybe initially the 60 degree it will turn out 150 degree after a few uh, 100 cycles. We also uh, mentioned that because of this one uh, uh, there will be change in a surface topography such so, means as uh, progress happens as the uh, tribal surfaces come in a contact and slide against each other there is a possibility of the surface topography to be changed. We have given example also that even the uh, quite possible after 1000 cycle the surface roughness become half of the earlier surface, initial surface roughness. And then uh, we say that coefficient of friction will go through the fluctuation before reaching to a stable uh, state 
again I have written a question kind of um, an exclamation mark that whether we will be really achieving a stable state, no we will not be, but much lesser variation will be achieved when the peak expertise are been let me say either deform elastically, plastically or been removed from a surface or from interface. In the situation there will be some sort of stability, but again it will not be a constant value. Now, this is an interesting thing we say each lubricated surface is coated with a film or in other words each surface is lubricated in reality except the vacuum or maybe the high temperature or extreme cases is something different when we are cleaning the surface and maybe we are making margin surface otherwise the surfaces will be always contaminated or maybe getting oxidized on the surface itself. So, each surface will be lubricated one way or another way. Now, question comes uh, uh, with this lubricated surface which happens naturally will the expertise get separated or surface will remain in separation that is very difficult to code that is why we require artificial or outside or maybe say additional lubrication mechanism and that is why we say it is very important to consider all this aspect what is required and how much it is really required. What we else we have learned in this case? We say that the tribal interaction uh, they really uh, are in, uh, come into contact in fragmented manner. There is no continuous contact, there will be maybe some peaks will be in a contact and some other time other peaks will be in a contact. So, this is a currently a fragmented form and uh, designated the nominal area will be far far more compared to the actual contact area. That is why we learn that the stress level will be much higher compared to what we calculate in mechanical stress calculation. So, that is very important. In addition, what we learn that we really require a negative skewness that means we do not want a normal distribution, we want somewhat different than normal distribution. Many theories we assume the surface is a normal distribution, we know the normal distribution um, skewness will be 0, but we do not want 0 skewness, we want a negative skewness. Not only this we require high kurtosis value that is very strange because most of the time people say this the kurtosis value should be lesser than 3, but we say no it should can be more than that. Reason being the when the kurtosis value is more than 3 on higher side it will have more peaks and more valleys also. And we know that during the initial running in time peaks will be terminated or removed from a surface or glassically or plastically getting deformed that means intimate and finally will be getting more skewness better skewness and then that can act as a reservoir for the debris as well as for the lubricant that is what we really require. Another one uh, we learn that the two body operation and three body operation we see smaller particles mostly they go through the rolling action more compared to the sliding action and if there is a rolling action they consume energy in that they do not harm the surface. So, this is what has been shown here that there is, there is a interface between the surface one is S1 here and S2 here. Now, mostly the smaller particles will move without really hurting at the surface because they are not getting any resistance as such. However, the asperity is irregular or uh, maybe the particle is irregular in a shape then, then only the problem comes. So, that is why we say that since the most uh, smaller particle lose energy in rolling three body abrasion is a lesser wear than the two body abrasion and uh, the, what I was shown earlier that coefficient of uh, the wear coefficient particularly wear two body abrasion is generally 10 times compared to the uh, uh, coefficient under the, the three body abrasion. Again these are the just tentative values of initial guess, but the reality we need to really go ahead with a sophisticated model and to predict some uh, the good results from that. So, this is a just initial uh, the, we say knowledge to be uh, given and understood. That is why we again for, uh, written that severe damage is possible at the type of interface by larger particle and then this is a major issue if the particle size is bigger and it is not uh, really able to rotate inside uh, uh, maybe at the interface then it will slide. So, it will act like a two body abrasion and here we have shown that uh, a particle is a slightly rounded it will go through the uh, rolling action and rolling action does not really create a more wear. Uh, it may create some sort of fatigue, but uh, sliding further and the wear will be much much lesser. 
Now another one I uh, in one of the lecture I say ideally we should have a liquid lubricant. Reason being it can carry away all the debris contaminants, it can carry away the heat also that is very important. But major drawback is a retainability, how it will remain at the interface that is a major issue and many times we require a pumping source for that and pumping source will require energy that means if I want to reduce the coefficient of friction from 0.1 to 0 0.01 one tenth of that and then I really require a pump power to for this purpose where I am consuming more power at the pump naturally then in the situation liquid lubricant will not be very useful. On those situation we will go for the grease lubricants that will be the better option and second thing is that uh, many times we use a additive package with a grease lubricant also. So, that remains in the intact at the those positions. So, wherever the retainability of the lubricant is required we will go for semi solid lubricant or solid lubricant also. But if retainability is not a major issue heat carrying debris carrying is a more issue then we will prefer to go ahead with the liquid lubricant. We also learn that is a number of uh, lubrication regime even though very uh, difficult to say dry lubrication does not mean anything here we are saying assuming something like a solid lubricant it is a dry it is not really flowing at all. So, if it is not flowing it is a dry case it remains in a firm situation. Other one boundary lubrication uh, which uh, happens at the interface and the mixed lubrication is basically a uh, mix of the boundary lubrication EHL and fl uh, fluid flow lubrication. So, mixed lubrication is the present topic is a mixture of the boundary lubrication, elastohydrodynamic lubrication and fluid uh, flow uh, lubrication. Now, boundary lubrication generally should be treated the big thing. However, we are considering this boundary lubrication uh, in a lecture 12 that is a solid lubricant and then we are also going to cover thin film coating where is a lecture 14 that again it will come as a boundary lubrication. So, we will be considering this boundary lubrication in lecture 12 and 14. We will be covering a EHL in lecture 11, fluid film lubrication in lecture 9 and 10. So, this is a aspect we have considered and the mixed lubrication because we require more curiosity, we require revision of what we have already learned from fundamentals and how do we achieve it, how do we implement those things. Now, we use a word a specific film thickness so basically to divide to quantify what is the lubrication regime. Again it is just estimation. Now, in this estimation what we use a word composite surface roughness that RQ value of surface 1 and RQ value of surface 2. And uh, in addition we also learn how to measure uh, total height roughness and RP that is a maximum uh, peak uh, height. Now, these values that these parameters are also important reason being we use arbitrary word the specific film thickness should be greater than 3 for the hydrodynamic lubrication. Other book says it should be greater than 5 for hydrodynamic lubrication. Other books say they great, should be greater than 10 for the hydrodynamic lubrication because they are using only composite surface roughness. However, we know very well if the peak and uh, peak of the one surface and peak of other surface they come in a contact that means aspirative contact is going to happen. If these peaks are completely separated by fluid film then it will be called hydrodynamic lubrication. However, if it are not completely separated but elastically deforming then it will be elastohydrodynamic lubrication. So, in my view considering RT and RP will be also important to be considered for the our lubrication course or maybe say when we are lubrication regime we are considering. And we also learn that there is a shift from a thick lubrication to the thin lubrication that is a major issue that is why we are running this kind of course. If there is a thick lubrication there is a well established theory that well established and also equation we can solve it, but we know there is a transient initially that again it will go through the boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication, EHM. So, we need to learn all and then how do we really model in a manner so that even the lubrication uh, regimes are shifting from one domain to other domain everything is done by model itself is not that maybe say artificial intelligence algorithm is doing it or we do not have to worry too much about that or for every aspect for every tripo interface we should really model boundary lubrication, mixed lubrication or maybe say hydrodynamic lubrication EHL or in short we should model for mixed lubrication 
because every uh, fiber interface is going to go through the mixed lubrication which involves a boundary lubrication which involves elastohydronomic lubrication and hydronomic lubrication and that has been shown in this case here this is the optimum performance we are saying this is the optimum performance we should model according to this and uh, we know that the boundary lubrication uh, as we say lecture 12 and 14 will be considering and we will see how do we really bring those aspects. So, those things are important. So, what we can say in mixed lubrication regime, so aspirates will come into touch or uh, they will be contacting. So, there is a aspirate you can see here, but there is a boundary layer on that. In some time there may be may not be the boundary layer there is a possibility because boundary lubricant which comes into the contact they may be also wiped off depending on the pressure, depending on the temperature, depending on the relative speed. So, we need to really model to understand that. So, that is why we say that we need to model as pretty physical interaction. Now, in the physical interaction there is a possibility of elastic deformation, there is a possibility of plastic deformation and even the fracture also which we have shown in our another lecture that fracture happens of aspirates or uh, even the people use the word adhesive instead of that it should be adhesive plus fracture, abrasive plus fracture, uh, wear plus fracture. So, because the fracture is a separation of the debris particle from a surface and that will be inherently involved in all the tribal interfaces. Now, one more point comes because of this interaction there will be generation of the friction and if there is a um, the friction is on a higher side naturally the heat will be also generated and if it is not getting dissipated then it will get accumulated and it will enhance uh, again the friction as well as the wear rate both in the situation. So, it, this is important. Now, coming to the mixed lubrication we say uh, earlier we were thinking about the lubricant viscosity and increasing the viscosity index of lubricant, but in mixed lubrication quite possible the lubricant may not play significant load or it has a limited role in this situation. However, we need to concentrate more on additives and we say additives which can be a friction modifier, it can be anti wear additives, it can be EP additives or extreme pressure additives. We need to think about this. Now, you need to understand also when we are talking about the lubricant film, we are talking about the kind of a nano level or maybe say uh, some micron level. This is a very important when we go for the solid lubricant, maybe solid lubricant layer or maybe say coating, then we will come to the micron level. On extreme cases, MM level because we, we need to know it is a maximum uh, shear stress. If whatever the maximum shear stress, we need to increase the coating thickness or maybe say a lubricant layer on that. So, those things will be considered later, but this is a very, very uh, challenging topic and very interesting because it will be happening in almost every. Uh, tribo interface. Now, we use the word boundary lubrication question comes why and from where it uh, the term come. Uh, it came in uh, um, the maybe in 1922 when one of the biologists uh, uh, was uh, doing experiment uh, W. Uh, B. Hardy and uh, what he observed that very thin film adsorb layer, thin adsorb layer, we are using the word absorption, it is not absorption. So, thin adsorb layer and uh, he quantified a uh, kind of a n angstrom thick which uh, is uh, very, 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 very thin as such and was a sufficient this kind of lubricant layer was sufficient to keep two surfaces separated not only separated block, but glide also on even each other and it is almost a frictionless surface. So, if this kind of lubricant layer can be retained for the long time that will be the phenomenal and uh, what this was observed in 1922 uh, and after 100 years the number of researcher have done in the lab maybe for few equipment like a magnetic disk drive they have achieved very very thin layer maybe say 2 to 3 nanometer, but it has not been generalized it has not been used widely. So, we need to understand those aspects why it is uh, happening only for the few component is not getting generalized is it the cause or is something else. So, we need to consider those aspects. So, what we say in this case another one now we say between two relatively moving metallic surfaces friction decreases because of the thin film lubricant layer is available there and uh, we say that by nature most of the surface they get oxidized or they get contaminated or uh, maybe even the hand moisture is sufficient to uh, reduce the friction there. 
So, this is uh, important and then we say uh, if there is a lubricant layer then there will be some sort of interaction it can happen a physico chemical interaction there is a possibility of physical interaction there is a possibility of chemical interaction like a water when it comes into the contact it may act as a chemical reagent or it get corroded to some extent and then we can say that is a sacrificial layer because coefficient of friction is going to reduce because of that corrosion. If you remove then again it will get corroded so removal will be much on the if it is an easy removal then will be also problem for us it will get a faster and faster wear out. So, when we really have a chemical interaction and then on top of that there is a physically removal of that layer and we need to really control it properly. So, this is a water challenging and that is what the mixed lubrication and the additives which are really required need to uh, need to be really uh, understood properly. So, where we say that uh, because of this interaction metal to metal contact will reduce and it will uh, reduce the wear rate also uh, reason being it is important for us to really figure out how to reduce the wear rate by making physico chemical interaction or maybe say layer on a surface and that is how we are going to cover in the present uh, lecture. However, I am writing here big thing is it is a basically contradiction. What is the meaning of contradiction? We say we want a low shear strength layer on that on the top of the surface. So, we say lubricants protective boundary layer to be easily sheared off, we want it should be removed also easily, but it should also firmly attach to the metal. So, we want attachment to be the metal firmly and we want interface to be much easier or to be easily shared off. So, this is a kind of contradiction many times when you are putting a lubricant layer if it is easy to shear off then there is also possibility to get removed from a surface that means initially coefficient of friction can be 0 0.05 suddenly it will turn out to be 0.3 because the lubricant layer has been sheared off and been removed off from a wiped off from a surface. So, we want lubricant layer to be firmly attached to the surface but it should be surely or maybe interface should be in a manner it should be plied so that there is a no um, and then the resistance and there is no kind of a friction on that. So, what we say that to improve the boundary lubrication we really require a special kind of lubricant often uh, people use a word of boundary lubricant sometimes uh, people say only physical adsorption is a boundary lubricant when it comes to the chemical it is anti wear or extreme pressure additives. So, it is not a boundary lubricant however, this is the kind of classification everybody has its way to think, but what we say whatever lubricant layer which is getting retained on the surface that can be called as a boundary lubricant in this case. Now, there is also possibility of the we need to explore what are the mechanism of adsorption and desorption also to removal of the lubricant from a surface because we are saying that the moving surface will be there and then it will cause a sharing off of lubricant now deabsorption of the, uh, the lubricant layer also. So, we need to think about adsorption and desorption also. So, we need to know whether the lubricant layer will be there or will not be there or partly will be there then how do we deal it. So, this is a what uh, your another term we say uh, mostly we think about the physio absorption on chemi absorption surfaces and coefficient of friction generally will be a summation in this case here we are saying there is a lubricant layer it can be few aspirates have a lubricant layer and few aspirates are directly coming to contact. So, then coefficient of friction should be summation and this is a fraction alpha is a fraction which decides how much is the lubricant layer in a con uh, aspirates on a contact and how many uh, aspirates are without uh, lubricant. However, uh, uh, this is a kind of theoretical model and we need to experiment to come up with the right results. For the complete nomenclature here it has been written, uh, written that this is a variable SL represent the shear strength of lubricant layer which we say generally it is very should be very very low. And then uh, we have a SM and PM is a shear strength and a hardness of the software material. Alpha is a variable representing the proportion of true area of contact on which a lubricant adsorbs or separate from aspirates. So, this is a where uh, we need to really think uh, if alpha value is on a higher side that is always a preferable compared to the 
uh, lower side. If alpha is a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, naturally it will help us and then we know that SL will be much lesser because we need to design from this. However, this is not my relation, I have not tried, it has been picked up from a literature. So, I am writing it has been picked up from a literature. What we last time drive is something like this coefficient of friction because of addition, not a because of abrasion. Uh, addition uh, is uh, something like 0.5 and we use our tau y and that uh, as a shear strength of interface, if you are able to keep a much lower and how do we keep this much lower, we can say that we need to think about a mono layer or multi layer of a very, very thin lubricant layers which have almost negligible shear strength and ideally we say that tau y should be the 0 0.01 percent uh, or maybe say uh, 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.01 of the tau y in that coefficient of friction will be much smaller and then we need to think about how to create this kind of interface. So, there are three terminologies that have been used a physiosorption, chemiosorption and chemical reaction what we call a EP attitude. So, there are three methods which can be utilized and this is a physiosorption has been shown in surface 1 here and surface 2 here. We are showing there are the these are the polar lubricant which are getting attracted to the surface and then making some sort of a molecular bond with a the surface. They remain in polar and because of the polarity they remain attached to the surface. So, this is a important and we say friction in the, this will be called as the friction modifiers. So, friction modifiers are like a fatty acids uh, which we uh, have seen um, um, they are polar in, uh, and then they have some sort of a carbon chain. A uh, carbon chain number of carbon particle can be 10, can be 15, can be 18, can be 30 also. So, those things are important and the longer the chain it will be better and better results to us. So, what they, they form the layers and then uh, they help uh, sliding, easy sliding without really much resistance and then they reduce the friction and wear. But only question comes whether this kind of friction modifier will remain on the surface or not. So, that is why many times we use uh, liquid lubricant, it can be thin viscosity lubricant, we mix friction modifiers in that and allow lubricant to pass through the interface and friction modifier they get attached to the surface. Because we are using the lubricant, there is a possibility the friction modifier again get dissolved in the lubricant, good dissolvability is also important. If the lubricants are not dissolved uh, completely in a liquid lubricant, obviously the friction modifier are not um, dissolving easily, then it will get settled. So, we want dissolvability in a liquid lubricant and we want also the polarity so that it get attached to the surface. So, that is why the, um, then the contradiction comes, we want to get attached to the surface, move away from uh, liquid lubricant, but we also want that it should not get settled down on the bottom they remain on a liquid lubricant. So, this is a where we really need to uh, uh, you know, design the lubricant that it is properly. The another one as I say chemical uh, interaction or chemical adsorption. In this situation what happens that there will be a kind of a lubricant layer, uh, it will also have a lesser shear strength, but it will be little more stronger of molecular attraction plus chemical uh, you know, the force will be little more compared to the friction modifiers. So, or in, a, in a, the range I say the friction modifier will have a lesser bond strength uh, with a surface than the low shear is and uh, the shear inter layer will have a little higher bond strength and the sacrificial layer that is a lot of what happens because of the EP additives will have a little more bond strength. So, in order this is a friction uh, and the, if I assume the friction uh, bond strength point of view, bond strength point of view in this situation I will say that. Uh, EP will get a better results compared to the, the chemical absorption and then compared to the EP. So, so physical adsorption, the bond strength, the chemical adsorption will be more and EP uh, chemical uh, bond strength will be more, it cannot be so easily separated. So, what that is what is written the sacrificial uh, layer uh, operate based on the idea that a reaction product uh, from a tribochemistry comes from created and then the low shear strength of the interfacial layer which can be easily uh, and then the, which allow is easily climbing. However, we know whatever whether we are using friction modifier, low shear interlayer or sacrificial layer, junctions will be removed.
may be friction modifier already there is a more number of uh, molecules and then it is not really harming the surface. So, the good thing about a friction modifier is that they are not harming the surface while a low shear interlayer are harming to some extent because they are taking some material and oxidizing that material and if it is removed naturally material is getting removed while coming to the sacrificial layer they make metal uh, metallic uh, layer on the surface and the during wear if it is really worn out and then that will be the, uh, the basically removing material from a surface. So, that is why we are using the word sacrificial layer to reduce the friction we are causing some wear. So, if ideally a friction modifier should be really doing a better job compared to the, um, the anti wear additives or compared to the EP additives. We need to think in the direction if we are able to make really very good friction modifiers which are overcoming or maybe say they are providing better bond strength, they are really uh, helping at uh, extreme pressure and extreme temperature situation that will be always more advantageous compared to the EP additives in this situation. So, this has been shown a mixed lubrication and it has been shown here the boundary additives have been uh, uh, attached to the surface, however, the some places a split is coming to the contact and that is what with the mechanical uh, um, and then the strength of the materials will play important role here. While uh, when it is not coming into the direct contact then the lubricant uh, strength will be uh, playing a role and we can change the lubricant, we cannot change so frequently the materials. So, we need to really do little more work on the lubricant design compared to the material design. However, material design also is important material uh, newer and newer materials are important, but here we try to uh, the tribology we try to play more with a lubricant compared to the material because that is easier and much lesser co uh, lesser costlier also in the situation. So, what we see in this situation for mixed lubrication external load is shared by both boundary lubricant as well as uh, uh, contacting aspirates also. And then quite possible uh, and then the few places this is the thin boundary layer is also penetrated and that is why that is why user we are using the word mixed lubrication few places a metal uh, is also penetrating or maybe getting into contact and few other places is the boundary layer coming into contact. So, we need to account both in the situation. Now, these are the three um, um, the type of the um, boundary layer um, uh, mechanism been shown here. This is a physios option in this case you can see the polar ends are getting attached to the metal surface and because of the addition while coming to chemiosorption you can see here iron oxide and then the, um, the, there is a some sort of uh, uh, lubricant layer made of the iron oxide in this situation while iron is a bottom of maybe steel, but there is a thick layer and then this thickness naturally this thickness uh, what we say TC, TC will be naturally more than TP in this situation the physical adsorption will not be that much compared to the chemical adsorption. Now, coming to the, in the EP additives, they here we can see here iron and the sulfur and sulfur is much much more reactive compared to oxygen. So, the sulfur oxide uh, uh, is formed and again this layer uh, the, the thickness of EP uh, will be greater than the chemical option in the situation. And what we are writing also that in this case there is a no damage to the surface, no corrosion in the case this is a minor corrosion and here it we can say it is a corrosion. How do we control this corrosion? How much we are able to minimize the kind of corrosion? That is uh, our uh, way of uh, really designing the lubricant, but corrosion will happen. So, here we are reducing the friction, we are reducing the friction, but we are increasing the wear rate and that is why we are using the word is a sacrificial layer. We are sacrificing material to reduce the wear. Now, with the more and more dominating the features coming from environment side that we require a sustainable. So, that this uh, material degradation should be much much lesser. So, ideally all the EP additives should be removed and maybe the strength should be given a bond strength should be given to the physios option or physical interaction or maybe some sort of coating which is not really wearing out at all and then that is what we required and that will be discussed to some extent in the chapter or uh, maybe say lecture 14 uh, which is related to the coating materials. So, what we see uh, here adsorption films exhibit uh, 
uh, nanometer scale thickness that is what initially we showed here 2 nanometer this can be even a micron level um, and then uh, we say that uh, reactive film uh, is a uh, notable so adsorption physical adsorption nanometer this can be in micron level and EP additives uh, can be like an even hundreds of micron away in an mm also because there is a more chemical reactivity in this. So, uh, and then uh, what are the EP additives has been shown and they are all the kind of sulphides which can release the sulphur when come into the contact can be chloride can be phosphate and, and we know already that there are restriction on the sulphur and phosphorus environmental pollution is happening because of sulphur and phosphorus. So, we should reduce and we know the very well that most of the IC engine cases now lubricant uh, need to and then uh, has already sulphur to some extent they need to do a, some sort of refining work to reduce a sulphur that means a lubricant which had a sulphur and it was really helping to uh, reduce the friction. Now, because the sulphur is getting uh, and then the into the environment is a harmful. So, they need to do refining to remove the sulphur and think about some additives which are really able to help us or able to reduce the wear as well as the friction. So, these are the important aspects to consider and then uh, here coming to the uh, particular physio absorption we say more and more load than more and more uh, energy also will come. That means, that the lesser load then the physio's option uh, will have a lesser strength, but if you increase a load on the surface then the, the then this bond strength also increases. So, in that situation again the shear stress will increase to some extent and of course, if it is a proportional then we say coefficient of friction is a constant, if it is not proportional then coefficient of friction is increasing or decreasing depending on the load. So, what people think about the coefficient of friction will not be subject to the load. No, it is not. Uh, here in the situation, it will be subjected to the load also. Quite possible increasing load may increase the friction or may decrease the friction also. Now, coming to the physio absorption, little bit more explanation. Uh, I especially thought about uh, uh, making this kind of diagram and then showing this kind of diagram. This again from the references. We say that adsorption is basically on the surface. It doesn't get into that while well, absorption get into this uh, inside the material. So, absorption is basically physical or chemical, but it will happen only on surface it will not get increased into the material and this has been shown uh, the bond strength between the polar end of the lubricant and the surface and this is what we say that uh, uh, this is a uh, roughly of the 2 nanometer however, bigger and bigger length it will have a lesser and lesser coefficient of friction so, that is very important. So, what we has been said here? The physio absorption is a physical absorption and the van der Waal force plays a major role in this case and then uh, molecules are getting adsorbed are getting attached and because of the some more energy brown in motion and all also may get detached from the surface. So, it is like a, a kind of uh, attachment and detachment is a continuous process and adsorption and desorption are a continuous process. However, what we really require is of course, sometime uh, this uh, uh, the physical adsorption additives are being also named as oiliness additives. They get attached to the surface outer surface and then they are attached only physically because of the polarity or electro, uh, electrostatic forces. Now, whenever this kind of adsorption happens now this molecule is getting attached to the surface overall energy is reduced. If overall energy is not reduced there will not be a kind of stability. So, more and more energy reduction on, uh, on the, when uh, this uh, um, lubricant comes into the contact with the metal surface it will be more and more stable. So, stability is also related to the how much energy is getting lower or than only it will give a better results to us. Now, coming to the 2 nanometer I say that longer the hydrocarbon chain will have a effective more separation chances of the almost all aspirates are getting separated will be more and then uh, there is a possibility of the lower friction in the situation. So, if uh, we can go with a more bigger on uh, the uh, this uh, instead of 2 nanometer we are able to make think about the 10 nanometer naturally it will give a better and better results. However, we need to see the longer length coefficient of friction will reduce, but it should have a stability it should not happen the coefficient of friction is reduced and after that under sliding condition 
this polar ends are getting separated from surface. So, in the situation what will happen? There will be shuttling coefficient of friction lower like a 0 0.01, then 0 0.1, then 0 0.01, then 0 0.1. It should not happen. It should also show the consistent performance. That means the lubricant uh, uh, this uh, layer um, it should be thin, but should be also stable in the situation. This should be longer, but also stable. Otherwise, there will not be much advantage. Now, one of the major question comes: Why do I really require lubricant additives like that? Reason uh, we say that's why why boundary lubricants are required when the metals are already covered with a natural protective layer of oxide. Most of the metals are covered with the protective layer of the oxide. Why do we really require uh, extra boundary additives? This is what we see the mostly the protective oxide layer is uh, torn away uh, because of the sliding or uh, because of even the plowing because of the we have a roughness in the situation my surfaces have a, um, the roughness. So, they will get removed from the surface and they may not be sufficient time to rebuild that protective layer. That is why we really required uh, in this uh, uh, extra lubricant additives. Otherwise, a bare metal will come into the contact and the coefficient of friction will suddenly increase a very high level. So, this is what we really require. Uh, if uh, load is much lower, asperities are not really going to tear away the protein oxide layer. We may not really require lubricant uh, on the particularly boundary additives which we are planning to add into the liquid lubricant. Now, this has been also shown uh, ideally that uh, all the surface should have a boundary layer this is what has been shown here, but in reality it does not happen. Many times you when we this particle comes into contact one surface removes the particles from other surface also it will be without that. So, what is really required? We say um, ideally, ideally one lubricant um, one layer should be sufficient one layer on a surface 1 and one layer on a surface 2 that be sufficient, but we know that within a few um, an operation maybe say in a 5 to the 10 uh, sliding operation this uh, layer will be torn away. And in some cases they have shown that uh, because these are the very normal light time and sliding cases. So, so, in some cases they shown the 53 layers are sufficient and uh, when they reach the 53 layers then the coefficient of friction remains stable. Now, few other experiments are also available and the results are available. They have shown the pure mineral oil uh, whenever they were interacting with other the steel surfaces. This keeps the coefficient of friction 0 0.36, but when they add this boundary additives or maybe say on the polar ions uh, or maybe say additives which have a polar ion then like oleic acid, oleic acid is not very good, but yeah it has a good polar uh, on the end and it has a, one of the major issues are two carbons. So, that is uh, where the little instable compared to stearic acid. I prefer to use a stearic acid compared to oleic acid because that is uh, having single bond and does not react so fast and does not uh, maybe uh, it does not uh, will not be tear away so fast as the oleic acid from a surface. However, they, when they mix the 2 percent oleic acid coefficient of friction has dropped from 0 0.36 to 0 0.25 again here the value is being given, but these are statistical we will never ever you know, get again 0 0.36 if I repeat this experiment there will be naturally some fluctuation. So, it will always be with a some mean value some standard deviation value. Now, when it is increased further 10 percent further coefficient of friction has come down, but after that there is a saturation coefficient of friction is not changing significantly. So, this is what has been shown that naturally there will be some sort of saturation beyond that lubricant additives will not help. Uh, it will uh, be kind of uh, um, uh, no use as such in, uh, uh, and it may be increasing the cost. Now, as I mentioned the two one is oleic acid other one is steric acid. Now, steric acid does not have any double carbon bond while coming to the oleic acid which has been used here it has a double bond over here and the double bond is little more instable uh, while steric acid will be more stable compared to the, uh, the oleic acid. So, we prefer a steric acid compared to oleic acid. Now, what are the features we really require? We say that the liquid lubricant acts as a solvent. Now, um, in the in this case particularly whenever these lubricant additives they should continuously get mixed with the liquid lubricant again 
uh, get attracted to the surface. So, this is what uh, uh, we begin have now if we increase the number of concentration or maybe concentration of the uh, this um, in the like a oleic acid then there will be competition and then that is why we say the if we increase the concentration it will cause a more and more hindrance among the molecules uh, among themselves itself. So, there, there is a possibility that uh, it will not be very useful uh, unless to increase the viscosity. It may increase to after certain extent I believe that it will increase the coefficient of friction also. So, we need to think from that angle. However, one major issue comes when the, whenever there is an increase in the temperature that polar and maybe that this layer gets separated from a surface itself because these are the uh, 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 what we say molecular attraction will come down because of the temperature. Same thing will happen in pressure uh, and the lesser pressure the molecular attraction will be little lesser and the higher than because of the, the, the this polar ions are going very near to the surface the, the bond strength increases under that. So, that is why we say that uh, and the temperature and pressure they affect the van der Waal interaction and then um, uh, increasing temperature decreasing pressure reduces the van der Waal interaction and then in the desorption occurs or lubricant additives get separated from a surface. Another point we say the extent of the phase absorption can be influenced by the surface area that is means if I am increasing effective surface area or if I am increasing the surface or maybe reducing the surface roughness that means increasing the real surface area then the physical absorption will be playing major a role. So, this is what I mentioned earlier instead of thinking about EP additives which are corroding the surface if I am reducing the surface roughness it may play a good role with the physics option also. However, we need to think if the temperature increases what whether mineral oil which we are using as a carrier fluid can they really reduce the heat also that is also important because uh, physics option is uh, kind of uh, depending on the temperature. So, we need to really think about those aspects also. So, this is what we say a larger surface area we are talking about the real area will provide a more side to the uh, molecules and then uh, absorption will be much more effective compared to the lesser area. Now, we are talking something like a stability of physical absorption. We say that mineral oil mostly they do not react with uh, chemically. So, they remain in that and uh, we need to really add uh, lubricant additives. So, here we have shown here uh, pelargonic acid is a one example hysteric acid which I mentioned that it is a my favorite and we go with the hysteric acid. You can see here the carbon chain here the 9 carbon uh, particle here 18 particles. So, naturally this hysteric acid will play a major role and bigger uh, more effective. So, that is why I say minimum chain length for effective lubrication is SH9 increasing and from 9 to 18 uh, increases the, in the friction um, transition temperature. Admit it will be little more where the temperature uh, and the, the instead of the 60 degree uh, friction suddenly changes from 0 0.05 to 0.1. Here in this case the temperature may increase from uh, 60 to 90 or 100 degree. So, higher and more and more length it will have a higher and higher friction uh, transition temperature that is a very useful and such. Moreover, in this case in the uh, in not only the uh, this one, but we see if uh, can this chains are straight it will be easier. Many times there are branch chairs also. And then the, there are branches of carbon may be some other uh, molecule will come and then uh, we say the branch one uh, will have a lesser effective it will be having a lesser uh, attachment compared to the um, straight uh, and then the molecular uh, and the polar molecules. One more important aspect comes at the electron uh, negativity that means when we are comparing like you know we want to make uh, uh, the bond HF bond. HF bond or maybe OH bond we have shown already OH bond here. Now, OH bond what is the polarity? So, how do we find the OH bond polarity? We need to take uh, uh, this 3.44 minus 2.22 and that gives a polarity something like a 1.24. Now, if instead of uh, uh, this OH if we go with the fluoride, so hydrogen and fluoride that this comes out to be on the higher side uh, is something like a 1.78 naturally HF bond will have a much more strength compared to OH bond. So, that is why we need to when we are really synthesizing the molecules we need to think about which bond really we need to make 
is the OH bond, is the HF bond. Like in O O2 bond or maybe this H2 bond, they will not be having polarity. So the heterogeneity is required for making the polarity, and then you should not also get balanced so that otherwise the results will not be favorable. However, that's why we say that in this case, each individual HF bond is a high polar a highly polar due to a significant uh, difference in uh, electronegativity while OH bond is slightly lesser but if we are con uh, 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 making two bond one uh, one side OH other side OH also they can neutralize each other so we do not want that and then that is why the synthesis of the this kind of uh, attitudes is very very important how do we really get a better and better results. One more thing is that because there is always a kind of the Brownian motion so uh, uh, there will be some time that uh, how much time the molecule will remain into the contact after that it will be tear away it will be moving away also. So, that is why we say heat of adsorption should be on the higher side temperature should be on the lesser side because if you increase the uh, TS the TR is going to reduce. So, this is a fundamental vibration dimensionism of uh, Brownian motion as such. So, uh, and this is a kind of uh, available now how much really we are playing a role or uh, the synthesizing in a manner. So, E is increasing and T s is coming down. So, that will decide how much time molecule will be attached to the surface. So, this again a time dependent after some time because of the vibration this molecule will get a destabilized will be getting separated from a surface and that is why we need to think how do we go ahead with the more uh, the polarity and then increase uh, this T0 uh, time or increase E and reduce the TS. So, overall the results are favorable and then we are able to retain the, uh, and, uh, what is it, the, the boundary layer on the surface. There are few uh, things like in this case we are saying that it is a structured one um, and then the, all the polar ions are getting attached to the metal surface while this is a disordered one reason being the temperature. Now, above critical temperature you are able to see that uh, vibration phenomena increase significantly and then the van der Waal force is not able to be effective and then uh, this molecules are not getting attached to the surface. So, temperature is one of the major uh, um, and the parameters particularly for physical adsorption and if you know the operating temperature or if you are able to reduce operating temperature one way or another way then physical adsorption will be good, but if it is operating temperature on a hard side then physical adsorption will not be really helping as much. Now, coming to the uh, layer in this case we say coefficient of friction particularly for uh, clean surface um, because if the surface is clean physical adsorption will be on a hard side if friction uh, if it is not clean then uh, there will be a, a lesser and the molecular will get attracted. However, we are able to show a band and then here in this situation we are showing that the 10 mono layers are sufficient to reduce the coefficient of friction. Earlier slide we showed one of the case 53. So, again it varies from one situation to other situation some uh, and then the researcher indicate 10 molecular layer a mono layer 10, some uh, researchers say 53 some make uh, another one. So, however, uh, this modeling is a very important and then uh, we also have shown that with the temperature physical adsorption now uh, the percentage will reduce and that also need to be considered. However, one more thing is important that uh, even the polar uh, uh, whatever the additives we are using boundary additives we are using or friction modifier we are using it may ha not have a same effect for all same. Like in this case quite possible uh, in case of the glass uh, and comparing the phosphorus bronze quite possible uh, this uh, you know, the friction modifier will have more effect on uh, physical uh, the phosphorus bronze or it will have more effect on the bismuth compared to other. So, even though we make uh, or we synthesize uh, the friction modifier, but it may have a different different effect on the different materials. So, that also need to be considered and that is why the topic becomes a little more complex more difficult um, and then we really require appropriate modeling we require really machine learning algorithm for that purpose. And what we can say here in this case uh, moving to the next topic in this case we say in some cases physical adsorption allows few tiny layers stick to the surface and stop asperities from going through uh, the, the, the metals contact. However, uh, uh, there is a possibility 
that uh, the few places is getting the damage. But as the temperature increases, there is a possibility that this get a deabsorbed. In the situation, we require a, a, a special chemicals which can act as a boundary layer. And those additives are called anti wear additives, and where the chemical reaction start, surfaces need to be chemically active, additives need to be chemically active, and the situation also should be in a, uh, according to that, that really the chemical adsorption occurs, otherwise, uh, we will not be able to get a good results. So, what we call in this case uh, uh, added wear additives, however, if this situation also not meet. Uh, we have a much more complicated case than we will call uh, extreme pressure additives which is again I am using the word as far as possible we should not use extreme pressure additives because we are going to cause the corrosion and then corroded product or debris which comes out which is not really environmental friendly. So, in future we should really stop uh, EP additives or we make additives in a manner which are nature friendly or environmental friendly for time being uh, sulfur, phosphorus even the chloride which act as uh, ETP additives they are harmful to the environment and then mostly we use a four ball tester to find out the what will be the strength of EP additives how much load really they can sustain now uh, before the welding or maybe the uh, when the two surfaces are getting uh, attached to each other. So, these things are generally done now coming to the chemi absorption uh, what we see that uh, uh, many times uh, physical adsorption is not sufficient that is why we are going for the chemi absorption again it will be kind of the minor or ultra minor corrosion it can be supported, but not EP additives. So, what we really require here we are using the word surfactant may be any other thing also they should be chemically active that means additives which you are making uh, they should be chemically active metal surface also should be chemical active for this chemical active, active surfactants. Another one the surface must be free from a fizzy absorption material. So, that whatever the molecules are getting attached if they remain then chemical absorption will not be easy. So, we really require removal. So, that is why this is what we call a temperature gap or uh, temperature distress gap fizzy absorption may be say uh, 0 to uh, uh, may be say 85 degree uh, it is really happening and then chemical absorption has start from 110 degree. So, in between this this zone is without any additives here in this case there is a production this case there is a production in between we do have a kind of distress scale. So, this is what we really require and sometimes we say that we should have a different different kind of additives which really bridge all the gap and give almost a good results in every situation. And one more thing is as I said that uh, during uh, contact even though this chemi absorption making the layer on the surface, but it may also getting a, a removed from a surface also. So, when it is getting removed that means, we are continuously losing the uh, additives which we are used. Suppose now we initially we added a 0.5 percent additives in the oil. Now, it is really running for the 100 hours quite possible this additives now after that it remains only 0.4 then 0.3. So, we need to really see the how the depletion of the additives is happening and if the their additives are getting depleted when do we really uh, change the oil now, but there is a newer demand coming the oil should be changed after 15,000 kilometers that means naturally we need to control uh, how fast they can react with the surface and then how much wear should be happening. So, these are the very controlling parameters we that is why we require very sophisticated model also. This is a very important thing comes and sometimes we say that uh, even the friction modifiers they act very nicely this, this is the molybdenum dash sulfide or graphite additives which are kind of friction modifiers but they can replace also anti wear additives in some situation or particularly what we say lighter to moderate load situation. If it is happening or if it is possible then we should go ahead with this kind of additives that is why molybdenum disulfide is known as a solid lubricant graphite is known as a solid lubricant, but here we are making nanoparticles mixing in the lubricant. So, that if they also act as anti wear additives and they minimize uh, on the the wear of the surface itself. If it is then whatever has been written here it can be really handled properly. So, this is important for us. Now, we are coming to the why the fizzy absorption as a low, um, the, the, at the lower temperature they get separated reason being whatever fizzy absorption happens energy decrease happens, but not to that extent. So, here you can able to see E D 
and then here you are able to see the, uh, the, the, the this difference naturally this uh, energy decrease is much more than this energy decrease that is why the chemical absorption requires much more higher temperature to get removed from a surface however this is a temperature but sliding will be able to remove if sliding is removed that is why we are saying the layer is getting rubbed. So, there is a sliding and there is a temperature what we are talking about the temperature now but sliding case uh, physical absorption case also the molecule will get separated but newer molecule will come because minimum whatever the concentration required we generally make more than that. That means, there is a other other molecules that are present there they will immediately occupy the seat. So, that is very important and we need to really think about that and if uh, I compare from um, in the, in this uh, in the stripe back curve point of view I can see friction modifier I use but only for this uh, zone anti wear additives are used for this zone. If I am able to keep uh, uh, friction uh, mixed lubrication in this dome itself then it will be very good that means, I have a possibility that I can design interface in a manner they remain in this zone only it should not go to uh, AW zone. So, so, this is a where we really require a good design good modeling also. We uh, cover one uh, important um, the anti wear additive is something like a ZDDP initially it was used as an antioxidant, but uh, uh, after some time that it will uh, was understood that it acts as an anti wear additives. However, the major issue is that uh, this additive has a sulfur as well as a phosphorus also. So, sometime we use a uh, in this uh, in the, in the chemical composition in this manner sometime in this manner again uh, uh, at that as a temperature increases beyond this uh, they also get they absorbed from the surface that has been mentioned. Now, here we are we are talking about uh, uh, R type um, which R can be a primary R or maybe secondary R or maybe alkylene R and then what we say the primary R is a little more stable reason being it has only one carbon uh, bond and the two hydrogen bond while secondary has a two carbon bonds. So, that is why uh, when we, uh, we use a gasoline we try to use uh, the ZDDP with having a secondary R while when you think about uh, diesel engine we have to think about a primary uh, thing because it has to sustain a high temperature. For high temperature primary R will be more preferable compared to secondary R and then these both are common in almost all automobile engines however now there is a need to replace these additives uh, with uh, better uh, additives uh, which can be environmental friendly. So, that is why we see uh, you know, the primary additive has been given and then uh, hydrogen bond has a higher energy compared to dissociation though compared to carbon. So, whichever primary additives that is why they require a higher temperature to um, and, uh, get removed from a surface compared to the uh, secondary additives. Last one in this case is extreme pressure additives. We see that um, um, uh, this is uh, really as I mentioned earlier that it we should avoid it. However, um, um, we really require to sacrifice some sort of uh, uh, layer under extreme cases and it has been utilized in almost all the um, even the gears or engines cases also. It, if it is possible in the future we should remove it and then uh, we, we replace it with uh, some sort of uh, lubricant additives as I mentioned that it can be a uh, molybdenum disulfide, can be graphite, graphite also or graphene, graphene has a different kind of versions also. Now, why these are the popular have become a popular reason being that they make a product after reacting with a surface which has a very high melting point. You can see here iron sulphide or maybe ZDP, uh, ZDP when I act with a steel or iron then they make iron sulphide and the melting point is a 1170 very high in the situation even iron chloride the melting point is on a higher side that means they can sustain such a high temperature all other lubricant lubricant will not be able to sustain. So, this is important however, as I said earlier in the sliding conditions they will be scrapped and they come in environment and that is very problematic that is why we say here very clearly uh, where debris pose a significant challenge due to their carcinogenic uh, nature and their potential as a environmental pollutant. So, that is why we need to really go for the better and better additives that is why we say that given that surface undergoes gradual wear choice of uh, additives is very critical. Even this uh, EP additives with a gear we have experience even if they are not in use 
many times it should be under high temperature only they should work but even under uh, not a very high temperature they react with the surface they uh, change a pH level from 6.5 to 5.5 also. So, they continuously corrode the surface. So, that is why we really required a good solution uh, to avoid the, this kind of uh, features. Now, when we compare uh, boundary additives and EP additives and then we say in a reality up, up to the present situation, uh, if I use only the mineral oil, a question of friction will increase with the temperature. If I use uh, only fatty acid, uh, initially up to certain temperature, certain critical temperature, it will remain constant after that it will increase. If I use EP additives, it will not really act. So, this all are the idea, but as I mentioned in one of the gear all we have found that EP additives are uh, even acting at the lower temperature, lower temperature may around 60 degree, 50 degree also. While uh, ideally EP additives should not act, coefficient of friction can be on higher side other temperature increases they lower. So, that is why the, the if you look at the ice engine oil comparison or maybe lubricants, they mix. Uh, they mix uh, EP additives, fatty acid additives, anti wear additives, they make complete package and then they add to the lubricant. So, this is uh, what uh, has been required in the, in, in the present situation and we really require some good solution to avoid this. So, that is why we say multi component additives consist of the molecular layer that augment the tribal performance whatever the situation low temperature, medium temperature, high temperature, they give a lower coefficient of friction but to some extent the um, higher uh, wear rate. This has also been given shown in this case in dry case uh, initially coefficient of friction is increasing with the load and temperature, but uh, with uh, mineral oil it is giving uh, is able to sustain some load some temperature with the fatty acid it is able to sustain little more at the anti wear additive little more and EP additive little more and finally what we are getting oil mixed with the fatty acid plus anti wear additives plus EP additives. So, this is what again this figure I have picked up from a literature, uh, but it is giving a demonstrating that in a reality we really require a multi component additives, it is not a one additive, one two additives, we require all mixed together. So, this is a what uh, now I am trying to close this lecture with the indicating that the need of a new category of lubricant, we need to really make a new lubricant which can mitigate the environmental consequences and then uh, which was the challenge is coming now here that uh, the oil change uh, should be in, in initially it was a 15,000 kilometer or it should move to the 60,000 kilometer. So, that uh, oil should not be changed because when you are changing oil naturally it gets discarded and then we really require a new additives uh, to be mixed or maybe when you are using a new lubricant that is consuming uh, those additives again. And then we really uh, in uh, these days we really required a uh, low volatility uh, base stock of uh, in, the, in the lubricant which has a low viscosity also and a low volatility also, but we need to play with the nanoparticles and then we will give a better results. And then uh, one more possibility if they, there is no carbon dioxide emission it will really help us. So, if there are additives which can reduce the carbon dioxide emission that will be really required even though we know the literature many people have done many things a lot of literature is available we need to compile and then we need to come up with the right results. Now, some cases we required high vacuum aeronautical cryogenic and again we really required some different kind of lubricants. So, that will be required. However, in lecture 12 we will be thinking about the solid and uh, we will be discussing about a solid lubricant which has a number of advantages particularly in uh, this situation high vacuum uh, cryogenic applications and all the liquid lubricant cannot be utilized because it will get evaporated. If you are able to make a good coating or able, able to make a good solid lubricant then we may not really require liquid lubricant or in between semi semi uh, solid lubricant also will be useful. So, here again uh, this is what I in the previous slide I say that uh, presently uh, the friction modifier, anti wear additives and extreme pressure additives they are being utilized. They are given that uh, if we are able to optimize uh, tribo surface in this zone the friction modifier are fine. Friction modifier are not really harming the environment, but anti wear additives less harm, EP additives more harm. So, if you do not come to this environment or this uh, case that will be good. So, that is why what we say even if, uh, um, um, if you want to avoid EP and AW then use a solid lubricant is something like graphite 
uh, which is not harming environment to replace this zone and then we keep even the mineral oil similar manner which contain FM uh, frictional modifiers. So, anti wear additives can be replaced uh, with a solid lubricant make a coating on the surface. So, we do not really require anti wear additives, we do not really require EP additives, but we require a coating on the surface. So, those things will be discussed also in the lecture 14 and uh, with this I say thank you for attending this lecture, thank you.